about the public. It, it's dollar signs. But are we in it for money or are we supposed to be providing a service? We have to window the long lines. It's not us. They're cutting jobs left and right, sending people over here, over there, intentionally to make the public to be dissatisfied with us. To remove the West Farm Post Office from zip code 10460 is to take a step backward in terms of being civilized human beings. Rain speed us both. The moon and night can stop the mills. They're making his appointed rounds. They close those postal. There'll be no rounds. The next one for them, where they want them to go to, is Hamilton Bridge. Couldn't have found a church over there or something just a little bit closer to college? Something's messed up here. That's a good question. Because this is the heart of gentrification right here. The heart. Let the people in! The people post office! What are you doing? Let the people in! The people post office! Yeah, but they, they gotta let the camera in, because the camera's public. Uh, I think they're violating. You're not gonna let the press in? Hold on. Are you trying to figure Come out now? No, it's a public hearing. Don't let people speak. Let me address that, man. This is a hearing, not for us to listen to you. It's just put your name on it and write down whatever questions that you have. And these questions or comments will become part of the public record. The crowd isn't as big as we anticipated, but we're going to have you come up and ask your questions at the microphone if you choose. This hearing was located at Lincolnton when it could have been held in the senior center on 140th Street or any of the, the, the halls close to college. We could have brought out so many seniors. Now this post office was chosen because we don't have to pay for it. It's free. Considering the elderly, because we gotta look. We gotta look out for them. And like I said, my mom lives in a zip code. I'm a, I'm a postal employee and a union worker. We gotta do something for them. The area served by College Station is comprised by a significant population of low-income residents, including seniors who do not have access to such technology. Where is your data coming from? How did you make this assessment that there's been this drastic change? Change in in the way that people first class first class mail was way down the there's less people coming into the post office which we measure every transaction that, that happens at a post office so we have data to show that the workload is declining it's because of the declining volume of the workload what are the details just waving our hands and not giving us any facts a substation i've seen that done in the past that substations were established we are looking at um like say partner with local businesses that want to sell stamps. Homeless people rely on the post office for mail delivery. The need for postal um, post offices and like postal employees for incarcerated people. The same applies for like homeless folks. The people who are coming into the shelters are coming from the same neighborhoods where all the people who are locked up upstate are coming from. Well, you said we should fill out these cards and you're gonna make them part of the uh, public record. I wish you were more public with these hearings. I've been to a number of these hearings so far, and one, they're only notified um, through the community in English, uh, which I think is criminal. It's, uh, this is New York City. People speak more than uh, just English. Yes. Uh, second of all, I've been to uh, some of the hearings I've been to, only half the targeted po population, and none of the politicians have been notified, uh, which I think is. Um, intentional in a lot of ways. I'm kind of just saying, will you have mobile units in place periodically for those with limited mobility? No, right now we don't, we don't put mobile units out there any longer. Will we have access to a report? Are you going to do a post right. Oh, you are, sorry. Um, will we have... Will no, they will be part of the public record. Is it it will be. We'll be able to see it access to ourselves. I can't answer that, but try to avoid the... There are ways to access the minutes. 
Um, folks, I'm sorry. Latreya Sumter Moreau is here from the Postal Service. She's the discontinuance coordinator for the whole district. She can make a request to the Freedom of Information Act. Oh, that's great. Great. Hey, that's not public. That's not making it public. Now, we should get a larger picture here. This is just not the college station. There's 34 stations in New York, 17 in the Bronx alone, and they want to close 3,200 nationally, including 200,000 postal workers. Now, that's going to uh, have a ripple effect in the families and the communities and nationwide. I don't see it speeding up. It's gonna slow down. The more, the less workers that you have, the more burden is on the workers. How are, how are they gonna get the mail to me when they have to work and they have loads and loads of mail? The mail's gonna start backing up. You think it's, it's just tough now? Oh, just wait until <coughs> this happens. And it doesn't need to be done. The post office overpaid the retirees' health benefits to the tune of seventy-five billion dollars now. Now, rather than like talking about closings, you should be fighting to get that money over to operations. And if the money's yes. not there, we can have an investigation about what happened to this money. The same story in every community. The people who depend upon the post office the most are the elderly, the disabled, poor people, and small business owners who can't afford the alternatives. There's a law in this country called the America for Disabilities Act. There are laws in every state and every city that protect the rights of the disabled. This closing of this post office and post offices where disabled people live are violating the reasonable accommodation sections of those laws. And closing the post office or threatening to close the post office spits on the people who are disabled. We need more post offices, yeah. not less. 80% yeah. of the members of my union are people of color. If you look at where the post offices are being closed, they're being closed. They're not being closed where rich people live. No. If uh, what is your salary annually? I'm not going to discuss my personal finances. Okay, in the one percent sector, for example, you take the seven place. No, not even one employee will be laid off. The postal service has been a cash cow for the Treasury for decades. The Postal Service commissioned an audit in 2009 from the Hay Company. The Postal Service itself did that. And that audit said that the Postal Service had overpaid $75 billion. In 2006, the Postal Accountability Enhancement Act prepaying a future retiree health benefits for the next 75 years and it had to be done within a 10 year period. So that meant that every September, September 30th of the fiscal year, the Postal Service had to write a, write a check to the Treasury for $5.5 billion before they sold one stamp or one money order. This is a financial crisis that was manufactured by Congress. Article one, section eight, paragraph seven, of the Constitution of the United States talks about establishing post offices and postal roads. It says nothing about closing college station. That's the reality. What they're trying to do is turn the post office into working for the 1%, while constitutionally it's there to serve the 99%. That's all of us here. That's everybody has a right to this and a right to universal service. They're just not telling you the truth. I've seen this community turn hostile, not from inside, but outside. People have had their disagreements, and it's making people angry, and they're turning it inward on themselves when it should be yeah. OWS, Occupy Wall Street. All right. Ooh. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. My name is Jossie Watson. I'm from Frederick Douglass Academy. Even though I'm a kid, I still have the right to speak. Right. And, I don't think, and I don't think that you have the right to close down a post office where the elderly goes to. I take, I take mail from my grandmother, bring it here, and it's just not right what you're doing to the community. I can mail a letter one day, and it gets to Queens the next day. It's yeah. excellent service. Yeah. I can't imagine losing that. Charles Rangel, Keith Wright, all of them should have been here. You know, the gangster movies and all of that. that that's where I learned. You know, I, you got Manhattan for what, $24 worth of bees. I learned that in school. 
You know, that's calm. That's, that's what I learned in the street. That's calm all over the world. You know, so when we talk about the corruption and the stealing, that seems to be a part of the spirit of America. The greed didn't just start this year in 2008. It's been that way. When you can take land from the Indians the way it was done, when you can enslave people, and, and, and let me tell you something, you, slavery still exists in America. This is what the 13th Amendment says. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude shall exist except as a punishment of crime where well, you have been duly convicted. So when I went to prison, and that's what disenfranchisement also means, not that you lose your voting rights, but you're stripped of your citizenship because very good, essentially a slave. And what gets even more critical to show you how greed comes into the picture, that the 13th Amendment, which once said that an individual in this society couldn't own a slave, now can through private prisons. Mm -hmm. So the 13th Amendment has no meaning. That's greed. And what I learned as coming through the streets, that money had more value than human life. I didn't care what I did to anybody to get mine. But I took my lessons from those that ran this country. Right. You see, so they don't care about the sick, the elderly, the disenfranchised, the marginalized, don't care about any. You know, the communities that you're hearing about, because you didn't go downtown I heard that loud and clear. You haven't went to, into the, you know, the white neighborhoods and closed none of those posts off. Only in, and, and what many of us in the community say. This is a slap in the face to the African American community and Latin community and Asian and working communities. This is a real attack to begin with. We've been going around to hearings that we've been finding out about all over New York. We've been checking and they will say, well, closing 17 post offices in the Bronx. Did I say that? Did you hear me say that? 17 post offices in the Bronx? 17? Leading the country? What another racist slap in the face? Mm -hmm. 17 in the Bronx. But what is this? Look around this neighborhood. This is a form of gentrification. This is a form of closing whole communities. Just like you attacking communities in a rural area, when you close off an area and someone has to go 17 miles down the road to another post office, which is really a community center, a historical community center where people meet, where people communicate, where people find out about jobs and other services in the neighborhood. I went to uh, a post office yesterday in Chelsea. And in this particular post office on 18th Street, which was slate to be closed in one of the first hearings that we heard about, the post office was filled. It said there was no business in the post office. So I took a picture right away and put it up on Facebook and asked the U.S. Postal Service, well, why you say this post office is not needed? I have to wait in line for services. And the cutting of jobs, how could you talk about cutting hundreds of thousands of jobs and when we're, in a, we're at a place now where we're saying you have a job program, you're getting ready to create a job program. I haven't had a regular job in three years. The problem is jobs. We got to make more jobs. And here, here is a program to eliminate 200,000 jobs. Uh, I don't understand. Can someone explain that to me? What is a discontinuous? Discontinuous to me means you telling us this hand is a sham. The hands all over the place is a sham. You having it just for the sake of having hands. What made you select college um, post office instead of any others in the other neighborhoods? It, we, we, they were selected by Washington. How can Washington, the people in Washington, sit in the offices and choose the post office that's, that's to be closed? They don't come out and walk around to these post offices or anything? Whose money is it? The problem is we don't have a voice on how it gets spent. 
That's our problem. No, it's not a problem that there's no money for the post office. It's that they're stealing it and ripping it off. It's not a problem there's no money for schools. It's that they've decided to put it into paying interest payments to banks or a trillion dollars to military corporations. I mean, don't you think anyone who makes a profit off war should be in jail? Yes. Yes. What is that about? Yeah. Yeah. So we have to, if there's one message we have to say here again, I think we should tell them resoundingly, with your FOIA request three months down the road of information acts and all this baloney, I'm sorry if this is hard for anyone here to do. I apologize. But can we stand up and show our opposition to cutting college and to cutting all post offices and show them now, together, with one voice, all of us, if we could just stand up. also and I am a window clerk and I do that I do know that the elderly may depend on us. There's a lot of um, elderly people that don't have bank accounts. Where they need money, money orders they come to us. They need help filling out forms because they don't understand or maybe they can't write and we help them out. So the postal service is very like we, they need they they depend on us for their service and I know that they they come to us often and they have like problems or anything or mostly they want money orders, they want to buy stamps, they don't want to put, be put out the area. They want to be able to come to a place that's close to home and be able to buy their stamps, money orders. They don't want to travel to 125th Street or anything else like that. So I feel like, you know, for service that we just need support, but we also have to have a voice because if none of us speak up, like the people that came here today, if we don't speak, then nothing will happen. So we have to unite as I am 88 years old, my feet are bad, and I can just barely make it down to 125th Street, and that's going flat. It is impossible for me to walk up that hill on 141st Street up to Convent or past there, and Amsterdam is another two blocks further west. They close it. I don't know what to do because I have no computer. Unless the post office or the people that's closing it is going to give me your computer. And I am not computer savvy neither. Just to say that it's not only the uh, uh, seniors. I am also not computer savvy. So who's going to help me? What is the next procedure? How are you going to get back to us and tell us what's happening and where do you go from there, from here? So to answer your question, I'll hand out the summary sheet, but there is a process that we follow once we collect the data and make a recommendation whether to discontinue the study or move further with it. But we don't have the decision whether to close or to remain open. Esto es una injusticia, aparte del servicio que le están negando a la comunidad. Eh, ¿Qué es eso de que el gobierno habla de crear empleos y luego va, van a despedir cientos de miles de, de trabajadores? ¿Y qué pasa con todo ese dinero que sí lo tienen, solo que el Congreso les ha forzado a pagar por adelantado los retiros? Eh, posiblemente si no estuvieran obligados a hacer eso, no tuvieran desbalance económico que dicen que tienen. Es un desbalance creado. They're going to be closing, and we can let the people know. 